All right, today I'm going to show you how to disassemble, reassemble, and pin up a Medeco biaxial mortise cylinder. This is a 10200, which is a inch and an eighth long mortise cylinder, probably the most common mortise cylinder in America. Uh, so I'm going to walk you through the steps, whether you're new and want to become a Medeco dealer or at the very least service it, or maybe you already do and just want to see a different perspective of how someone uh, disassembles and reassembles these. I've got some kind of finer points that I've learned over the years uh, from servicing probably thousands and thousands of these things. Um, real quick, we'll start off by showing you, and I'm gonna block these keyways because these are still active. Um, the difference, or the easiest way to tell the three generations of Medeco apart uh, are on the front of the cylinder itself. Here you can see that is the biaxial logo the newer M3 will have the M3 logo in the same spot. And then the older, what's called the original, uh, won't have any sort of logo or designation on it. I see a lot of people, especially when they're describing these uh, on eBay to sell or when talking amongst other locksmiths, uh, they'll use this 51S. But as you can see, this is the original. And then we'll go here to the biaxial, it says 51S here. And finally, on the M3, it's the 51S on there as well. That's a designation provided by UL that's unique to more, uh, Medeco. Uh, so it's not, a, it's not a keyway, it's not a type or anything like that, it's, it's just a UL number. So don't get in the habit or get confused by thinking that's uh, some sort of, um, I don't know, classification of a cylinder. Um, so we'll walk through the steps of these, um, show you how to disassemble them. First things first, just like any other mortise cylinder, if we want to remove the plug, we got to remove the cam. Uh, now in this case, we're not pinned up, so it's free to move. Um, so if you're ever changing a cam, and here's a few examples of them, um, and I'm going to go off on a different tangent here, but uh, all Medeco cylinder platforms, uh, mortise at least, even the 32 series interchangeable core, the housings, they use the same cams and that's for all platforms, original, biaxial, and M3. Um, in fact, the only little difference is on the 32 series, the screws that hold them in are a little bit smaller, actually a lot of bit smaller uh, than just standard mortise cylinder screws. Uh, but the same cam can be used uh, on all platforms. So one size fits all, so to speak. Now, when you're swapping the cams, uh, especially, you know, if you order them set up to like a Z01 cam, which I've got right here, if you ordered them uh, spec to Z01 cam and maybe you had to change it to a, you know, a Schlage Z34 cam, which is their L series mortise lock or, a, or whatever, um, it's in your best interest to pin up the lock first and then swap out the cam because what happens is I'll pull a screwdriver out and I'll show you. If I'm tightening it or if I'm loosening it, loosening it, see the plug wants to turn with me. And if we have the pins in there, we can kind of hold it fit or hold it from moving. Um, but if that's not the case or, or whatever, um, that does come up. And what I'll do is I'll just rotate it 180 degrees. I'll hold it with my thumb and forefinger. And then I'll just use that to get started. These are on there pretty tight. Uh, if you do a lot of medical, or if you do a lot of uh, uh, mortise cylinder work, uh, would behoove you to get a screw gun to facilitate the removal of these screws, especially if you're doing a lot at once and you're changing the cans or whatever or if it's just a traditional mortise cylinder where you have to get to the plug to rekey it. Um, it's a good idea, speeds things along. So the cams come in two pieces. You've got the cover itself and then the cam itself. Now, one thing you'll notice from the factory, and I don't know why they do this. I've, I've never asked and never learned um, for the high security platforms by Axial Original and M3, the cover will be oriented like this, but on X4 and Keymark, 
it'll be like that. I don't know why they do it. I'm sure there's a reason to it. So I would just suggest that you follow whatever the factory's doing and orient that cover to match it. I'm sure there's a good reason for it. I don't know what it is, uh, but nevertheless, it doesn't hurt to follow what the factory's doing because they know best. So I've got the cam removed. Now I'm gonna disassemble the plug and remove the plug from the cylinder itself. Um, since we don't have any pins loaded, we can just change it to disengage that or rotate it to disengage that sidebar and then pull it out. Now, when you're pulling out, you want to place your cylinder up and down and I'll show you why in a second. Let's get the plug out of there. The reason why you want to do that as opposed to holding it like that is because you've got those hardened discs right there, which protect the shear line and the uh, sidebar itself. Now, they do come out and I let these drop out for a reason because I'll show you how I can get them back in. They're kind of in there. I don't know if you can see. You can see at least for the shear line, uh, it's recessed in there. So it's kind of easy for this one if you wanted to put it in with your fingers and then push in and rotate. That's one way. Of course, it just fell out. But the one for the sidebar is a little bit deeper in there. So what I like to do is take a pair of tweezers grab one end of it, place it in, feed it in, and then rotate it back into place. It's important we keep it up and down so that it doesn't fall out. And then again, for the sidebar, I'll do the same. I'll hook it, place it in that recess, enough to get started. Once it's in, I'll use the tweezers to rotate it back into place. And then I'm gonna put that over there so that I don't run into any more problems with it. Now. Sidebars usually are press fit into place enough to the point where they're not gonna come out with enough effort. In that case, that one did, so that's good. Um, two screw or two springs in the sidebar itself. Here's the sidebar, and if you're an astute or familiar with Medico at all, you'll notice that it has the gates already cut out. Uh, that's because now factory ships the uh, same sidebar and uses the same sidebar for both biaxial and uh, M3 and that's what those gates interface with. That's the M3 slider, but uh, same sidebar will work. So if you've got one that you need to still, uh, borrow from to put in the other or vice versa, you've got it. And then just a few, I guess, points. Uh, there's a uh, drill protection ball bearing there. When you're installing the sidebar back, we wanna make sure that that ball bearing faces the front. That's the correct orientation. Obviously that provides the added drill protection. And then you've got two springs that fit into, it's kind of hard, I'm normally doing this not filming it. Two springs that fit into cutouts on the sidebar itself. So what I like to do is if I had to take this apart for whatever reason, maybe to replace a spring that was crushed or sidebar or whatever, I'll load my springs up and then I'll place the sidebar very carefully and slowly into the plug. And I'm gonna make sure it's seated right uh, because if it's not and you go to put it back into that cylinder housing, uh, you potentially can crush or at least damage the sidebar legs. But once I'm confident it's in the right spot, I'm gonna press in and you can see those legs entering the plug, which is where they'll interface with the pins. So I'm confident that it's situated and oriented properly. So then I'll take the plug, and it doesn't matter how you put it back in, and I'll just press it in, click it into place to so where the sidebar is holding it in. And then, reassembly-wise, just like we did before, I'll go ahead and Place the cam against the plug. I'll put the cover on. And it's not wanting to seat properly, so just a little tap. It's all good.
I'm going to hold that cam in place again while I tighten it up. I want to get it as tight as possible so we don't have any operational issues down the road. So then when we're confident that it's as tight as it's going to be, I'll just put the key in, rotate it, make sure everything's moving free and smoothly. Now, if I'm going to pin this up for the first time, uh, I'm going to show you how I do it. Uh, first things first, I'm going to rotate the plug 90 degrees counterclockwise. And here's why I'm going to do that is because, I don't know if you can see, it's hard to see, but anyways, that's going to place the sidebar uh, at the top and I'm going to be able to access it through the cylinder plug holes. And the reason I'm going to do that is right here, lubrication. Uh, this is fluid film. This is what uh, Medeco now sells and warranties all their cylinders, even their click cylinders with. Uh, it's a great wet lubricant. Uh, use it, starting to use it on other products too, like mortise locks and things like that, and having great success with it. But for now, this is what Medeco warranties their cylinder with, and that's what I'm going to use because we always need to follow manufacturer specifications to the T. Uh, I've heard they check... Uh, cylinders uh, when warranting them warrant when you send in for a warranty if I can say it right uh, the first thing they check for is to make sure that the right uh, lubricants being used and they've got methods and ways of testing it so I'm not going to chance it I'm just going to use what they say and for now it's fluid film so I've got my plug rotated 90 degrees clockwise with access to that sidebar and I'm going to lubricate directly on that sidebar. First, I'm gonna go in through the second chamber, give it a quick shoot, and then I'm gonna go back in through the fifth chamber. And the reason I do that is because the most finicky temperamental part of a Medeco cylinder is the sidebar. We wanna make sure that, that sidebar has ample lubrication when we send it out to the field. Uh, and by going in through the second and fifth chamber, I'm also able to get the chambers immediately to the left and right of it. So if I lubricate second chamber, I'm also hitting the first and third, and then with the fifth, I'm also hitting the fourth and sixth. So once I've done that, I'll take my key and I'll go back and forth, you know, six, seven, eight times, work it in there really good. And once I've done that, I'm confident that that sidebar has got ample lubrication. And so, uh, I've already got my pins laid out, my key cut, obviously. I'm just trying to save some time. Uh, I'm just going to start loading these from the top. I guess one thing I can mention, it's kind of hard to notice here. Uh, biaxial and M3, the indicator tabs, which, again, I'll try to show that. You can see right there, that's the indicator tab. And that's uh, what a, prevents further rotation than, you know, your left, right, or center within the cylinder itself. On biaxial and M3, your indicator slots for the tabs are if facing the front of the cylinder to the left or if viewed from the top, they're at 12 o'clock. On original, they face the back. So keep that in mind. That's why you can't change pins, never mind the differences and all that. But um, when loading those, it's important that when you drop them in, your indicator tab is lined up to where it should be so that it goes in. And so I'm just going to keep loading these up because what happens is if I were to push this in where the tab does not line up with a slot, I'm not going to be able to get it in. So if I'm lucky, I can, well, it's kind of hard to do it that way. So you usually have to dump it and try again. I'm just going to continue from the front to back because Medeco is low to tip for biaxial at least. I'm 
And then once I've got them all loaded, you can see they're not all the way in. So what I do is I take a small screwdriver. This is one that Medico gives out at their classes. Um, I'm just gonna press them in, make sure that plug was all aligned and everything like that. They'll go down and then you kind of look and you can see, again, you're not gonna be able to tell from the camera, but you kind of see that they're all relatively the same height. Um, Medico doesn't use a uniform stack height. They've got a range depending on the uh, plug total itself. Uh, but you kind of, you can notice uh, when something's out of the extreme compared to the others, but we look good there. So I'll proceed to uh, loading the springs. Another trick you can use to make sure that your stack heights are where they should be is you can just simply inspect the springs. If one's way lower or way higher than the rest, you know something's not up. And then we're gonna cap them using the set screws. These are 564 uh, Allen head if you're curious. Uh, I've got a tool Obviously, like I said, the Medico gives out, but we've also got a Craftsman as well that we use. Uh, the Craftsman's a little bit faster because it's got a movable top, so it allows me to reset my grip with each turn. I'm just gonna tighten these all the way down. You don't wanna go overboard with it. You want them to go a little bit beyond snug, but I mean, I'm not gonna be fighting it to the point where I might potentially strip the screw head and get one of those caps and they're stuck, which is a, another tale for another time. It does happen and there are ways you can overcome it, but ain't fun. And then when I've got them all tightened in, I'll take my key, verify it works. And then again, I'm just gonna go back and forth five or six times, really make sure everything's clicking as it should be. And then as I've said in other videos, go ahead and turn the cylinder upside down and damn, it's awkward to hold it from this angle. My arms are shaking. Uh, and then once that's in, we're just gonna upside down, work in that lubrication a little bit more. And that's it, that's all there is to it. Uh, this is gonna be the first part of a multi-part series. I'm going to show you how to service pretty much everything that Medico sells uh, because we sell it and uh, kind of picked up some tips and tricks and little nuances about servicing these things that uh, have helped me out and I wish somebody would have told me from the beginning but either way it's the first in many and uh, hopefully you enjoyed it and we'll go from there hopefully I know I've got an older 20 series video on this channel and I'll start uh, working on new 20 series, maybe a 10.0400, which is a rim cylinder next. Eventually work our way up to a, a 32 series core. Those are fun. Uh, but for now, that's a 10.0200 biaxial. Thanks.